Got an iPhone 11 today with no backlight. Okay, right there you can barely see it. Um, I'm hoping that shows up on camera. Anyways, shut it off, turn it back on, you can see the time right there. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pop the hood on this thing and we'll see what's going on on the inside. I believe this phone has been opened before, so it's probably gonna be, probably gonna look very easy. And probably not going to be able to see much from here. So I think we'll have to get this under the microscope, most likely. Yes, yeah, so I doubt we're going to be able to see anything here, but I'll go ahead and get this taken apart the rest of the way. And this... Kind of funny that it's flapping around like that. All right, let's get this under the scope and see what this looks like. All right, so we are looking at the display connector and I'm just gonna take some diode measurements here, put the red probe on ground and let's see if we have values. Oh, it looks like we might have some damage down here in this area. I don't know if you can see that. The plastic doesn't exactly look healthy. But we've got 271. That looks good. Roughly point, I'm sorry, uh, 0.271. I need to keep saying that. Over here, almost 0.5. This is 0.36. This is OL, and that is correct. That's supposed to be OL. 0 0.332, 0 0.352, 0 0.461, 0 .5, uh, 0.597, and OL is not supposed to be what we're seeing here. So let's see, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We should have about 0 0.451 here and we do not have the correct value. I'm going to go ahead and check the rest of these real quick and make sure we have something. Most of these should be around 0 0.4 to 0 0.6, and over here, we've got an OL, and then 0 0.597. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look that up, but I, I have a hunch here. I'm gonna take a closer look because the connector looks like it had a little a bit of a struggle. Someone's having a tough time with it. So let's peel this back and see if there's any evidence of uh, pry damage here, which is going to be my first guess. No, nope, I do not see any pry damage, but I'm going to go ahead and take this off anyways. And there's a couple possibilities here. So these two pins, number four and number 10, connect to the anode side of the two backlight circuits, which illuminate the LCD. They don't always fail at the same time, so in this case, I suspect that maybe the battery was connected before the new display was installed, or something caused a power surge. Either way, hopefully the filters did their job and we're not going to have to deal with a blown or two blown backlight driver ICs. Let's just double check and make sure we have continuity here at the top. Should beep when we touch down here, and it does. Same thing. So our connector is good, but uh, we do not have a completed circuit. Yeah, so we are going to have to uh, take this board out and remove that shield, unfortunately. Now these shields are fun to remove because we're going to have to put a considerable amount of heat on this foam to do it. So I think I'm going to flow a bit of low melt alloy here. And I've been meaning to make a video to demonstrate this for a while. 
it can be very helpful but you've got to be careful with it because you don't want any of this stuff staying behind and getting into your circuitry so we're going to use this alloy we use a very small amount of this alloy that has a super low melting temperature then we're going to remove all of that alloy and I'm going to use a very uh, precise soldering iron to just kind of flow this stuff along the edges you don't have to have a hundred percent coverage like I said I want to avoid putting it in any places where that it shouldn't be so we'll add some flux and it will melt a little bit of this stuff and it will make removing this shield much easier so we'll warm this up add a little bit of flux to start with And now we're going to use some very, very small amount of this. And like I said, you don't need 100% coverage because it will flow along the edges on its own. And it will melt very easily, as you'll see. And it will stay melted for a while. In fact, you can almost heat the surface and do it like old school soldering style or non-micro soldering style, I should say. Just want to be careful where this stuff goes. Ooh, that's a lot. Get rid of some of that. Can be tricky to control. Let's get a better view here. And you can kind of hopefully see it getting shiny down there on the surface as we go back and forth. All right, make sure this is looking good here. We got plenty, actually. Doesn't take much. All right, I think that'll just about do it. Now, we can come in here at a lower temperature. Let's turn this this way. So I'm gonna come in at about 380. Uh, let's go three, let's go 370. of our regular 430 and we should be able to get under the corner here Let's see if we can get a little zoom and I'm just gonna lift at the corner there we go I think we're under it now just like that we're done let's get rid of that stuff it's like I said we don't want to leave it behind I grabbed the wrong soldering iron but I think this might work it's relatively easy to get this stuff off so you don't have to stay here so long that you're uh, causing problems for surrounding components. You can even hold this with the tweezers if you have them. But as long as you heat the wick, it's really gonna draw this stuff out pretty easily. I don't think we got that far in there on that side. All right, we'll come back and deal with the shield after we get this thing off. or after we uh, figure out why we have no backlight. Okay, so pin four goes there, and that goes nowhere. Yeah, I think that, I think that resistor slash filter, whatever you want to call it, is bad. So from number four to here, 
we have a connection. And from ground diode value on this side, we have 0.387, but over here we have OL. Yeah, we got OL here, okay. So we've got a blown filter here and over here. So these two guys went bad for some reason. So let's take these off and uh, see what happens. Okay, this is hard to grab a hold of. We're still there. All right. All right. Let's get some solder on here. Some leaded solder, I should say. While I'm at it. I am going to clean up a little bit of this uh, low melt that stayed behind right here. And probably the best way to do this is with the tweezers, because if you grab them, you might get enough heat down here to get that stuff away. See how good that works? Another good argument for the tweezers. It can be useful. All right, so we'll clean this, find a couple more filters. I like to have a little more solder up here though. There we go. That's something to work with there. Okay. Let's find our parts. Let's get a little more flux here and here. So much fun getting these out. Okay, there's one. And that's it for that package. All right, that should do the trick. All right, let's see what we got. Actually, we can go all the way back over here. And our value should have returned to number two from the top left-hand corner. So we've got, oh, we're gonna have a very low value until it cools down. And try not to touch plastic, because it's very soft. Number five, yeah. Okay, so I think we're gonna I think we're going to have a backlight now. These will take a minute to go back to normal. We'll let it sit while it cools. I shall clean this up. All right, let's check this again. Yeah, we're climbing 273 and keeps going up. Three, four, five. Got 276. Okay, that looks more like it. Let's see if we have a backlight. There we go. All right, stuff doesn't want to stay plugged in for some reason. Got a crappy uh, charge port apparently. Anyways, that'll blur that out, but I think we are good to go. Now we want to get all this low melt stuff off of the shield.
we have a backlight. 